We're good. Good. What's happening, everybody? Um, welcome to uh, another day in uh, another day in life. And uh, so, what I thought might be cool today is um, we make a pizza, and um, we'll show you the process, and then show it going in the box. Right, Lacho? Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Lacho's the best. Been with him since the beginning. Since he was like this big, well, since '94, and he's uh, he's part of the he's the family, just like everybody here. But um, uh, so we'll make, I thought we'd make a pizza and, um, and we'll show it like the process. And you know, it's kind of like I was thinking about like when you buy a steak, you don't really get to show up to the slaughterhouse and like see the whole process and you know, but maybe you feel more assured if you did. I don't know, maybe not. What do you think, Dave? I think they will. I think they're gonna feel good about this. So I think we'll make a pizza. We'll talk about what's going on. You know, somebody asked me about a live chat. I don't know really what it is. I just started this thing, but this is as live as I can get. But if you got a question, I'll always try to answer it, write it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're gonna make a pizza. Um, hey, Dave, come over here like this. You can uh, you can shoot from there, I guess. I uh, shoot from right here. Okay, come behind me here. Okay, can you see this here? These are dough. They're about 228 grams, eight ounces. See, I knew that all my European and Canadian friends. We go all, it's all matters, that's what we say. Right, Lacho? Yep. Okay, so one thing people ask me about sometimes is stretching a dough. A lot of techniques. Stretching a dough is a lot like playing baseball or golf. You know, I'll put this down for a second to explain what I mean. Everyone tells you, no matter what you do, hold on, Lacho, don't get ahead of the people now, hold on. He's excited. <laughs> Excited, Everybody in Chihuahua, say Lacho. Everybody in Chihuahua. Good. Lacho, Chihuahua, Chihuahua style, City, baby. baby. <laughs> we love it, big love Chihuahua. But uh, but um, what I thought was, um, um, I always say no matter what it is, I, I always want to study what's on our way. And sometimes, you know, people make the dough, making dough, it's, it's all easy. Everything is, everything is easy. But when I try to provide, like for myself, like a nugget that speaks to me personally. So I'll try to provide a nugget that will speak to you personally, that will help you maybe with your pizza experience, which, which sometimes will get some people away. They made a beautiful dough, it's proof properly, they got tomatoes, mozzarella, everything's good, the table set, the Chianti's a perfect temperature. Right, Lacho? Yep. Everything's beautiful. Um, fresh haircut. Look like Lacho right now. Like Lacho right now. Lacho with the mejor pelican de Marcello. So what happens is at some point, somewhere in that process of, of that second rise, like say this one, this one hydration's about 74, 76%. It maybe goes, depending on how busy we are, 24, could be 48 hours if we're slow. If it's, you know, super cold on a on a bulk ferment, it doesn't really, it doesn't really, I, I can't really, the nuance is small in that window. But with all that being said, and all the, you know, all the other things aligned, you're gonna finally get to the point you got a ball dough, and you got hungry people at the table, and they came over, they brought you a bottle of two buck chuck, and, and a cop salad over, to, you know, because it was kind of a bring your own thing. You were making the pizza, but you gotta now stretch it out to get it in the oven. And whether it's an easy bake oven, a wood burning oven, uh, a hot sidewalk, the process of getting it from the peel or onto the peel and then onto the oven seems to be um, get some people's way sometimes. Um, so what we're going to do is right now um, we got we got a uh, uh, we have dough. So all I did was. Right now, the dough's a little bit tight. So all I did is kind of flatten it down. And I'm gonna just let gravity, look at that, look how gentle. Nothing else, there's no slapping, there's no turning, it's just you being zen with it. Like, if we had like an eight minute bit, we could just let it hang down and, ha and happen before our eyes, it's happening. So the other thing you'll see, this is our original pizzeria and it's, it's tiny, it's literally 30 inches here, 42 inches here. And then people ask me like, well, why do you do my boards? I do my boards because I had no room when I started out to load them up in a big peel 
like we see in Italy or like in bakeries or like, you know, in a lot of, a lot of other places. So you use what you have, and that's what, you know, is our mantra here. Like, run what you got, smoke what you got. Run, run what you brought. Run what you brought. Okay, so that's it. I'll, I'll do another one so you can see it. Elijah, we get another tray? Yeah. Okay, let's put another tray out. Um, so now, like, just with that little bit of gravity, we got a pizza on a peel. And the cool thing about putting it on a peel, this is kind of good. Like, a lot of times people say, I'm going to use, you know, we use cornmeal, we use semolina. For high temperatures, I personally wouldn't recommend that. You know, uh, you know, cornmeal especially, uh, it's pretty coarse texture. It's, it's high in, in fat and oil. And I'm not talking about the weight fat. It means just it'll burn quicker. And besides, you know, being black in your oven, it can leave a kind of an off, off taste in your mouth. If you're cooking at lower temperature, it can have texture. But it, say, 550 plus, it's not your friend anymore. So what we try to do is, you know, use just a little bit of... This is a, 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 an organic flour, just about 13.8% protein. And we're just gonna rub it into the board. These are like old boards and we change them every, every, every year or so. But we're gonna rub them in just so we got enough. You know, not too much, not too little. Some people use rice flour, that's awesome because it's super slippery. Kind of can make you feel weird like chalks on, you know, like fingernails on chalk. It's got a weird feeling. So we just use the same flour. Like I like, to, like the, the idea of it's all, we're all in this together. The other idea is, we want to create surface to surface connection. So even the theory of I'm going to put anything underneath it that would that would separate us from our surface. For me, these are all the way my opinions, by the way, and my own experience with it. But I want to connect this service to the cooking service as quickly and as unaffected or unadulterated as possible. Um, so now, as I'm talking, it's higher hydration. So we're going to work quickly. So I'm going to I'm going to actually switch this board. See that? That's unbelievable. Just slides right off. Um, and well, let's make, what do you want to make, Dave? Marinara? Let's do marinara. Okay, let's make a marinara. Super simple. Super simple. And uh, you'll see here, so the tomatoes, even in our own health and safety, like these every day we make the sauce. And um, I'll show people a nice ladle of sauce. Look at that. So these are crushed um, organic, their own brand, uh, Bianco Di Napoli, shameless plug. Um, uh, my partner Rob DiNapoli and I, um, we have a little tomato business and our farmer Scott Parks grows delicious tomatoes. So I'll show you one thing like on a, on a marinara. So the marinara, that would be the amount of sauce for a margarita. So I'm going to stop now. If we're making a margarita, I would say put things where they ain't, you know, put things where they're not. So if it was making a margarita, I might have a little bit of pecorino or a little bit of parmigiano in those little nooks and crannies, leaving the kind of the hand crushed tomato little bits. So your mouth and your teeth become, they become like your incisors become that activator, like a pepper grinder. <laughs> you hear that sound? Fresh black pepper, <laughs> your cacio pepe is the next level. You know, you get it from the big fucking bin, the pepper, it's, 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 it's dead. So no, every, nothing's dying. So now though, that's for a margarita, but for a marinara, and by the way, these, are, these ladles right here that we use, these are the crappiest, um, if you go to any really crappy uh, restaurant supply, not the good ones, but bad ones, and you look for catering ladles, that's all these are. Because they have a real nice flat bottom. And uh, they're like the two, three ounce, whatever they are. But so, so that, with a marinara, it's all about the sauce. There's no cheese on it. So normally I'd be walking fast, so I'm gonna put a little more in that spot here. We want things to be, we're gonna use the same principles of putting things where we're not. Okay. And uh, next, this is, uh, this is some wild oregano. This one's from Calabria. Um, Hi to all the friends of Calabria that are struggling. We're praying for you. And we're gonna buy as much fucking oregano as we can. And uh, we grow oregano too, but in this case, there's an appropriation. We grow tomatoes, we love them, but in this case, I love the idea of something dried and preserved from, a, from its, its origin and its intention and the people harvest it and it took all that air and sunshine from Calabria and uh, here we are now in Phoenix, Arizona, we're going to activate it. So just like the pepper mill, you know, just like the pepper mill, Dave, right? There you go. The we're same just, thing. We're, gonna same, give same a little bump. we're just going to give it a little bump. We're gonna, look, it. it's raining. It's raining oregano. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. A little bank of that. The other thing, key to this marinara. 
is uh, this is the best friend you'll ever have, making a marinara. This little, little, um, it's on um, this is on backwards. I would have been embarrassed. Imagine that. <laughs> well, it's live TV, kind of. I mean, imagine that. You know, it's like, uh, so we're gonna load up our little garlic. It's like four garlic cloves. I'm not gonna use them all, but we're gonna slice the garlic. One thing that we never use here, and I hope you don't, and no disrespect to those big commercial peeled garlic, but we always got enough, especially right now, we got tons of time to peel garlic. We peel garlic every day, and then we activate it again, fresh that last minute. So I'm gonna give one more little bump of garlic because I'm gonna eat this one. Now, usually on the margarita, we, 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 um, we put the basil on fresh after, so it can, uh, it can kind of wilt into it and become aromatic. Um, traditionally, the, the basil is cooked on, on with the pie on a, mar on a margarita, but here we gild the lily. A lot of times there's no basil on a marinara, but it's your world. In this case, it's my world. So I'm gonna have a little fresh basil and then use more of that mar margarita technique on this. This and this very pedestrian looking bottle is single variety Paranzala olive oil from Puglia, where my family's from. Love to everybody in Puglia. Um, and uh, so single variety extra virgin Paranzana. Um, and we're gonna give it like a three count. One, two, three, boom. And, uh, and that's it. When it comes out, we're gonna hit it with just a little bit of mold and salt. So I've been talking a little bit. So usually we wanna work fast, it's wet. Let's see if it comes off the board. Oh my God, it did. And that'll be out in just a couple minutes. So, um, Lacho. You want to tell anybody else anything? Like uh, all our friends in Mexico, um, they're struggling in Italy, in New York. Um, but these are the people, man. These, the reason I'm doing all these stupid things and talking because I still want to connect. Like I said, every day connected. This is always about, you know, I'm embarrassed every day that I don't know how much money I can give him, his family, his kids. And um, so as you can see, my desperation has turned to this kind of half, um, oh here, half, I don't know what it is. You, you can write, tell me later, but be nice as you can because it's free after all. Um, so, as you can see, you can, you can see that Dave a little bit? Yeah. So you can see, I didn't even build a cornichone, build a little rim, I just used gravity. And we'll do that little stretch again, but while that's cooking, but the most important thing, whether you're at home in a home oven, you know, like, you get a pizza stone or a pizza steel. We love you guys. Big shout out to pizza steel. Um, just don't mess with it. Like you know, like anything you mess with, it usually doesn't get better. You know. Um, and uh, so we're gonna let it sit. As soon as we see color, we can turn it. So I don't know how hot it is, but I was getting to be about probably 750 floor temp. And when we go in, if you guys are using a wood oven or your friend's house, or you're building one over time. Like, don't just go in there like that. Oh, you got, I know the pros all know this, so I don't want to be whatever, but we kind of go in and just lift like that. Like, lift like you're separating first, you know? And as you separate, you're kind of just moving towards the sun. I always say, like, cooking pizza is like if it's a wood-fired oven. Like, you're a white guy, you know, with no sunscreen, and you came to Phoenix in August, and you want to lay out at noon. Like, that's the sun. <laughs> That's the sun right there. And that's the white guy. So you gotta appropriate, you gotta turn yourself and find that place. So there's no difference. There's no difference than that. Okay, we're not finishing up. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna now we're gonna go full speed, Dave. Alright, let's do here's it. Our, here's our dough balls. They right now it's early in the day, the oven's a little cold and I like. The dough is a little bit underproof, so it's a little chilly. Um, but that's okay. There's no excuses here. No prisoners, no excuses, but so we're gonna move it easy. It feels chilly, but again, so just so you see, there's a go ball, right? Like this. We're in our left hand. We're doing two things. Look at this. See right here? It's like doing that thing in your head. You put you put the rub of the flour nice. He's rubbing my flour. Turn it around. See if the pizza's burning. Yeah. Give it a little bit of turn. We're backing up a little bit. Because after it gets color, and it, it depends. If I was just doing a pure Neapolitan, I'd probably dome the pizza up. You know, want to get a little bit of try. I want to, our pizza's a little bit of a hybrid. Oh, here, I'll slow it down. See, so again, there's no need to anything. I'm just 